Welcome back to the lab. Today we have a very important decision to make. What kind of voltage reference is best for our 3D printer thermal runaway monitor? Should we use a series reference, shunt reference, or is the power supply accurate enough? That, my friends, is the question. I suppose if that's the question, we should probably start looking for an answer. Yeah. Hmm. Nope. A lot of answers. But to left those at home with my sense of humor. Seth, our temperature monitor can only be as accurate as his reference. If the thermocouple is perfect, the comparators are perfect, but the reference itself isn't perfect, this becomes a one-to-one -one error in the measured temperature. That's to say a 1% accurate voltage reference will result in no better than a 1% accurate temperature sensor. This is true for us because temperature is proportional to voltage in this design. There are two commonly available types of voltage references, series and shunt. A shunt voltage reference is a lot like a zener diode, except for everything about the internals. A shunt voltage reference is temperature compensated and constructed so that changes in current have a minimal impact on the voltage across them. Take the LM4040 for example. The equivalent circuit looks a lot like a zener diode, right? I mean, well, sort of. The internals look very different. They're much more complex. Take a look at the functional block diagram for this part. Not so simple after all. Yes, there is internal temperature compensation, a few current sources, an op amp, a small pile of transistors, and all this circuitry is emulating a Zener diode, but with much higher accuracy. In fact, the current flowing through this part can vary from 15 milliamps to 1 milliamp while only causing an 8 millivolt difference in output voltage. That is mighty impressive. This part shows about 15 parts per million or ppm change for every degree of operating temperature change and overall looks pretty awesome. For those not familiar with parts per million or ppm, this is the same general concept as percent but it's 1 divided by 1 million instead of 1 divided by 100 or it's a percent of a percent of a percent. Basically, one ppm is a very small change, and 15 ppm is also a very small change. That's good. The best thing about shunt voltage references is that they can operate off of a wide supply voltage range without dissipating additional power in the part. Notice I said in the part. Shunt references burn the excess energy in an external resistor or set of resistors, which allows for a wider operating voltage range than their series counterparts. The input voltage can change by a factor of two or so without really significantly impacting the output voltage with the right resistor selection. That's pretty incredible and interesting, but without something to compare that to, I don't think it really means much, right? Let's look at the REF3012, a series voltage reference from, you guessed it, also Texas Instruments. A series reference operates more like an LDO, or a linear voltage regulator, except for this is optimized for accuracy rather than output current. Basically, there's a very small quiescent current that flows, but the part will attempt to establish a constant output voltage regardless of load. The key differences here come down to the operating voltage range. This part is only rated to handle a maximum of 5.5 volts at its input, and that's pretty close to the nominal voltage rating of our 5 volt rail. Only 10% margin. I suppose that's probably fine, but I'd really rather prefer to see 20% here. And it's hard to compare these references directly, since one of them accepts current as an input and the other one accepts voltage. It's just not that simple. Line and load regulation calculations only apply to one of these references. However, drift and temperature effects still apply to both, so let's look at those. Looks like this series reference is rated for between 20 and 50 ppm per degree of temperature change. That's a lot worse than the shunt reference, though line and load regulation are very good. At this point, I feel the need to say either of these could work. The analysis can be done to determine how much error these references would add to Seth, and it would be a very small amount. However, accuracy is not our only goal here. I see a bigger problem with both of these solutions. They cost money. These references are parts on the board, and the shunt reference we're inspecting costs us around $1 in small quantities and that series reference costs about the same. Not to mention, it'll also make our layout a lot more complex because now we need to route this reference all over the place. There's gotta be a better way. And if by better, 
we mean cheaper, then yes, there are lots of cheaper ways. I could use a simple uncompensated zener, but that's a little sloppy, even for me. So let's compare the performance of that series voltage reference with a humble LM7805 voltage regulator. Can we get comparable performance from our voltage regulator? Let's find out. First things first, let's compare accuracy. Now we're using the series reference because that one works a lot like an LEO, so the metrics are about the same. We're using this fairly standard LM7805, like I said, which has a 4% accurate output voltage. Yikes, that is already a lot worse than the 0.2% accuracy offered by the reference. Not off to a good start, eh? What about line regulation, load regulation, temperature effects, and drift, right? Uh, worse, about the same, way worse, and worse. Turns out this voltage regulator, while sufficient for providing power that's around five volts, makes for a pretty sloppy voltage reference. It's almost like that's why there's a separate product category for LDOs and voltage references. <clears throat> Sass aside, let's ask the critical question. Does the 4% tolerance and objectively worse performance of the linear regulator matter? Is there justification for adding a few dollars to the design and making the routing more complex? Well, for a start, there are more accurate LM7805 regulators that are available, but let's stick with our sloppy 4% part for now. Let's say our voltage threshold was off by 4%. We meant for it to be 250 millivolts, which corresponds to 50 degrees C. However, the threshold could be as high as 260 or as low as 240 millivolts. That would lead to a temperature range of 48 to 52 degrees C. All of a sudden that 4% isn't feeling so bad. That's really not a whole lot of error. However, we're not only doing business down there, we're also doing business above 200 degrees C, well, 400 C actually. At 400 degrees or a threshold level of two volts, our threshold could be as high as 2.08 volts, which would equate to a threshold of 416 C. For this application, that doesn't feel like a problem. Like if we need to set the trip threshold 50 degrees C above our normal operating temperature, that seems fine. That seems okay. I'd probably do that anyway, so I think a 4% accurate reference should be sufficient. A shunt voltage reference would be great if there was a need to directly handle generating the reference from a 12 volt input. If lower power consumption were important, perhaps the lower quiescent current draw of the series reference would be advantageous if the higher accuracy was required. For the UPS project, where voltage accuracy is more important, we're using a dedicated series voltage reference at every microcontroller. For this temperature monitor, for Seth, our thermal runaway watchdog, I think the linear regulator will serve our needs just fine. I think that we can safely justify the added 3 to 10 degrees of error in these thresholds. After all, that's still better than a TCO or a mechanical thermal cutout. Before we go, I want to point out something that may be obvious, but also might not. How are we actually going to use a voltage regulator to set thresholds that make things happen with our comparators? Well, this is just using simple resistor dividers. We'll use a programmable resistor divider to select our trip temperature threshold, and that resistor divider will take its power from the 5 volt regulator, and the intermediate 2.5 volt reference will be generated using two resistors of the same value to divide it in half. For that 2.5 volt reference, it'll also be important to add some capacitors that will help to stabilize that reference during transient events, such as comparators changing state. All told, I'm content with our 4% accurate reference, and I'm happy to keep this project moving along. Perhaps I'll just have a 2% part on hand during our testing. You know, in case. Well, that's all we have for today. But if you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. Coming up soon, we'll be discussing our calculations that roll up the worst case temperature tolerance and dig into the failure modes for this temperature watchdog circuit. I can't wait. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!